uh, there's a study published in which it comparing immunoassay with mass spec for T3. If you have a lot of T3, they're sort of comparable, mm -hmm. but if you're going around 90 uh, nanograms per DL, 100, that's where the mass spec becomes really important. There's a d divergence of the curves there. So we really need to, do, to use as a routine, clinically, a mass spec for T3. It's really important. I assume the same is true for reverse T3, or is that assay more? The reverse T3 is even worse than T3. I can tell you, you can, uh, the, the, we actually did uh, a test, we never published this, but we used four different sources of reverse T3 assays to measure the same sample. <laughs> it was <laughs> it was completely crazy. So it's just noise. Right. So I, one would hope that when you go to the same lab, for example, if you go to, a uh, uh, reputable lab, yeah, they will always use the same assay so that even though it might not be accurate in terms of uh, relative the, the to the exact, mass spec, the, it's the relative exact to each value, other, yeah. but it's going to be precise, meaning that it's consistent along the time, uh, uh, over time. Okay. It, uh, so we, we, we trust the TSH number, especially when we're staying with the same lab. We trust the T4 and free T4. The free T4, yes. 